going to start by doing the, the simple CAD to, CAD to manufacture route. So I'm going to click on the icon here and launch the, the internal CAD package. I'm going to give it a few details about the uh, component that I'm going to design uh, and some sizing information here. If I was using tubular material then I would put an inside diameter here. Uh, I'm going to put a hole in this uh, component, so I'm going to put a hole depth of 10. I can work in metric and imperial units as well. And I select OK. And I'm presented with a, a drawing area here, uh, which represents the overall material size that I can design the component in. Uh, I can import into here in both DXF 2D format and STL 3D format you know, from other CAD packages. What we do find is that using the internal CAD package he here teaches some of the disciplines about what can and can't be manufactured uh, on a lathe. So I'm about to use the drawing grid here uh, for speed. Everything I'm about to do I can use by putting coordinates in through some different coordinate entry methods. But just for speed I'm going to use the grid. I'm also going to utilise the coordinate readout up here which has got X diameter and Z. Okay, so I've actually told uh, the pack package that I wanted a, a hole and at 10 deep, and it's actually started me off at Z minus 10, which is where the rubber band line is starting from. So if I want a 5 diameter hole, I just drag the line up to 5 and click select, and it fixes the point. You notice how it gets mirrored in the bottom here. Because everything's revolved on a lathe, it must be a mirror, so we automatically do that. So we're just drawing in the top half. This is where the intelligence in the CAD package helps the user. So it knows that this component can't have a hole that's smaller at the front face than it is at the bottom of the hole. So it can either be parallel or tapered. So I'm going to do it parallel. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go to X10 because what I want to do here is put a screw thread on this diameter. So I just right click over the horizontal line, convert to thread, put the hand and the pitch. If I don't know my screw pictures, then I can click the help and click the arrow here, and we've got a full table of, of screw pictures. So 10 is 1.5. I'll just point out while I'm in here, this help is a huge resource for the for the student, even to the point that when they come to use the machine, you know, they can it will lead them to this page and it'll even tell them which number button button to click. Okay, so back to the thread, and we want a 1.5 pitch, right hand click OK and the screw thread is put onto that diameter. We've also got a little dotted line here which represents the minimum undercut that's required to cut that thread. It's just a guide because I just need to draw outside that. If I draw through it like that then when I come to process the package will say insufficient undercut to cut the thread. If you continue you'll get your component but you won't have a screw thread put on it. So I just draw outside that. I'm going to go there Again, the CAD package here knows that a line going in that direction would be invalid, wouldn't be able to manufacture it, so I hit this brick wall here where it won't let me go beyond the vertical or tapered this way. So it's leading the student round to design something that can be manufactured. One thing's worth mentioning at this point is that we're drawing in 2D here. It, it isn't always obvious to the student what the 3D reality is of what they've actually drawn. So at any point, and I'll do it now, they can launch a 3D representation of what they've designed so far. So if I freeze that, you can see that we've got the hole, the screw thread, and what we've designed. So they can flick in and out of this at, at any point. Okay, so I'm going to finish this. I'm going to maybe do a little diameter here. We might sit a bearing on with a little undercut here, a little face here. Okay, everything I've done so far, I've used the left mouse button, which has given me straight lines. If I click the right mouse button, I get arcs, and I can fix the end point, and then I can swing the radius to the correct radius and direction. Okay, if I want to part off, so if I want to cut this component off from the material, then all I do is drag a line down to zero. Again, we can flick back into the 3D representation of what we've done so far. Okay, you can go back and refine the design, so you can refine it by moving around. Again, within the constraints of what we can, can and can't be manufactured. If you decide you want some extra points, we can 
can add them in all the time it's making sure we've got a continuous closed path so we don't have to worry about points that don't uh, don't match up okay so I'm going to put a little groove into that outside diameter we've also got a few nice uh, uh, little tools good engineering tools like chamfer tools taking off the sharp edges and also radius tools so we'll just radius some of these corners okay and again so we're happy with that and I'm happy with that as my final design and again I can launch back into the 3d render I can freeze this I can change the materials and I can in fact output this to the clipboard uh, and then you can actually incorporate it in some written project work uh, if I also rotate the thread, you can see it is a proper screw thread that we've put on there. Okay, other nice tools are we can switch on both incremental and absolute dimensioning. And actually if we move a point, the dimensions will be either added or subtracted dynamically. Okay, so that's the component we want to manufacture. Now I want to turn it into a a program that we can send to the machine so we go file process the billet we select the material from the drop down list here and then we click process okay now I'll just slow that down so what's happened now is automatically we are building up a, a CNC program here the system is automatically selecting the correct tool for the correct operation and we're getting a full simulation of the manufacture process. So if we just run that through. We've also got a cycle time building up here. Okay, once that's simulated, if we're actually connected to a machine, this now highlights and we could go straight to manufacture. So literally we've gone from design to manufacture in a matter of minutes. We go back into the simulation, we have a few nice tools so we can zoom in, we can turn on sections so we can see the internals, we can turn on translucency, and then we can rerun the, the simulation. And all this, of course, can be done by each individual student. Normally this application will be installed on a, uh, on a school or institution network, and then each, uh, each learner can spend time um, with the design and the simulation side of the software.